Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews. This being a show where it's about TV shows that are dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Kung Fu. A great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So first and foremost, we're picking up where the last episode left off. The portal leading to the realm that... Russell's been trying to get to the entire time is open and with Mia's blood he's able to pass through because only blood of the warrior and the guardian can allow someone through but for Nikki and Jilan it's like well we are a warrior and guardian so maybe we could go through it for Nikki it's like we have to because you don't you know it's like right Russell's able to cause so much death and destruction as a mortal we give him immortality and unlimited power what he'll do and even Jilan knows like you can't just let because Nikki makes her see like if we don't stop him he'll so many people will be under his control even you and it's like this is the man you've hated for so long in your life it can't you can't just sit by and let this happen so they go into the portal obviously this is all about finding the source the source that Zhao, the alchemist, tapped into to create uh, the the respective bloodlines, the Guardian bloodline and the Warrior bloodline. And so ultimately, together, they're able to sense out the source. It makes sense. I mean, it's part of your bloodline, so of course you'll be able to trace it back. But they need to be in unison because Russell can find it a lot easier because he's got Mia's blood. He's got... Uh, the hybrid, so it's even stronger force of like, both bloodlines are already together, but when Jilan and Nikki separate, she can't find it on her own. Which, I was so surprised Nikki ran into who she ran into, she ran into Suyin, the hybrid. I was certain, it was like, oh, you're gonna run to, I thought like maybe Pei Ling, or maybe she'd run into her aunt, is what I was thinking at first, but turns out that's not the case. I am super surprised she didn't see her aunt. I think that speaks volumes. Like, she even said, like, oh, I didn't see Pei Ling, but I felt... I wonder, did they write it like that specifically because they did have Zhao and they were like... Or maybe they decided to edit around that because it's like, right, Pei Ling, having the actress, do, like, double up on being Pei Ling and Zhao, like, maybe that would have been too much. Or they're like, no, 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 we're just gonna have her just be Zhao. So maybe that's what that was. Maybe that was just a decision, like, either writing or just, you know, editing of the episode-wise. but uh, Or filming of the episode-wise. Nevertheless, uh, but it's not just... Um, Jilan, who sees a ghost, which she sees her mom, so does uh, Russell. He sees Juliet, which I thought was interesting. I was like, oh, you're not even going to show all three children. That would have been really interesting. But um, Juliet's like, oh, like, father, like, you had all the money in the world. Why, why, why'd you have to kill me? Uh, why weren't we enough? All the money you had, children who loved you, who feared you, and it still wasn't enough. You killed me. You killed my brother. Why? And we kind of understand Russell's reason. Is it a sound reason? No. Basically, his dad was a hero. He was like, oh, he was surrounded by so many people he loved, which I was like, oh, that's interesting, considering, like, you surround yourself by people you can buy off and f make fear you. So I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. But the reasoning behind it is his father grew sick. And then when his father was sick, like, all all the hands came out of everyone trying to get a piece of his empire. It's like, right, these people who loved him, like, in truth, they were just waiting for their opportunity to strike, which I guess fuels Russell's need to just use people because he's like, right, people aren't good. People are just going to use you when they have the opportunity. So why even bother? But uh, his desire to not end up like his father because he said like he loved his father until he grew to hate his father because you you grew weak and you passed away. So that's been instilled of him, in him ever since he was younger and he refuses to be like his father, being frail or weak. He want, That's why not only did he want to live forever, but he wanted to live forever in a younger body too. So once again, does not justify his reasons for what kind of drove all this, but... I think that informed a lot, obviously not think, it definitely informed a lot of who Russell was. And like I said, I think the parallels of, you know, maybe the people that you're, who loved your father never really loved him. Uh, just like the, no one around you ever really loved you. Even Juliet saying like, oh, we loved you, but also feared you. So it's like, right, you, you had a love-hate relationship with your dad at the end. So it's almost poetic that all of your children, we don't know how Raymond felt about you at the end, but at least Juliet and uh, Kerwin both died hating your guts and feeling conflicted because they loved you so 
uh, th that sad cycle kind of repeating like that. But it turns out it's not Juliet because even he was like, "Why are you here? You shouldn't be here. This is an a, this isn't a realm for mortals. The only people that should be here are those from the bloodlines of the Guardians and the um, the Guardians and the uh, Warrior bloodline." But obviously Zhao, because she started it all, she brought herself here. She put herself in this position. That's the only reason why she's a special case here. I mean, to be fair, she is mother to both bloodlines, so it kind of makes sense. But in the end, though, it's just like, yeah, it was like Zhao trying to stop him by eating away at his conscience, which it was working for a bit, but also it's like the man had this goal, this dream of aiming for this for so long. Uh, but Zhao was also saying that, right, he cheated to get here, which he's like, you cheated to get here too, shut up, don't like, don't judge me, only difference is, you stopped when you got here, I'm not, I'm gonna get everything, I'm not, I'm not just gonna be a part of this, I'm gonna take everything, and when I do, you and this world is going to collapse. Because she is so intertwined with this place that that's that's the only way she was able to keep her immortality. How she was able to become immortal was being in this world. The moment this world disappears, so does everything and herself included. So there's that. There's Jilan and her mom, which her mom, you know, because I guess for her mom, it's like, right, time froze for her. So like all she knows of her little is her little girl. And to see Jilan the way she is now, and then, you know, it's like... She said Pei Ling is there, and that it's like, right, Mom, um, wait, Pei Ling never told you what I did? And I think that's because Pei Ling didn't want to break her mother's heart, but also, like, she didn't want to change how her, her mo their mother saw uh, Jilan, I think is what that came down to. I would have also loved them to have time together, but maybe, you know, in the future, where things currently are for Jilan, maybe that is a possibility. But the moment she told her mom the truth of, like, I killed uh, Paling because her mom, because she's like, oh, mom, I I'm going to avenge you. I'm going to kill Russell. It was like, no, but that, we're guardians. That's not what we do. And you're like, eh, that's sure as hell what Jilan's done because she's dropped quite a few bodies. And in the end, it's like she admits, I mean, granted, it's not just killing Paling. Once again, she's killed a lot of people last season, this season. Um, but it doesn't, but, and she's asking for her mom's forgiveness, and her mom runs away from her. I thought this was the place messing with her, but I'm like, would, Jila, uh, would Zhao like, go through the trouble of doing that? So that actually had to be her actual mom. Once again, Juliet isn't part of all of this, so of course she wouldn't be here. But um, Jilan's family are guardians, so of course her mom and Pei Ling would be here. So that is kind of heartbreaking at the end. Her mom rejected her, refused to... And in that moment when Nikki meets up with her later, it's like, I'm a monster. You know, I don't deserve forgiveness. But Nikki's like, I've hated you for a long time because you killed Pei Ling. But those feelings have never served me. So this is coming from me. I forgive you. And I think for Jilan, because I think that's a beautiful, like, tail end to this part of her arc, potentially, is how... There was that whole thing of her getting visited by Pei Ling in the beginning and for it to be her sister's disciple that ends up being the one saying, I forgive you, despite the bad blood that's existed between them, the wedge that's been dr driven between this guardian family and the blood, uh, the warrior blood. Like, it just is interesting on so many levels. I mean, even Nikki had her run in with, um, like as Earl brought up earlier, uh, uh, Su Yin, who... Obviously, she has her animosity towards both bloodlines because all they've ever done is try to kill her. But when given the opportunity, Nikki didn't want to because it's like, I'm not here to fight you. And it's like, why? You're a part of the warrior bloodline, but you won't kill me because she's like, I'm not. Well, I'm different than the others because she wanted to find a different way. She didn't even given told time and time again, she should just kill Mia. She refused. It's like, right. I'm not that person, you know, and it's like, of course, she's not going to treat Suyin, because it's not like you asked for this. You were experimented on. This is all on Zhao, so it's not. You are, uh, you are, her, you know, a product of her creation, not of your own. And I'm surprised that didn't play further into the episode. But maybe that's a through line we'll kind of have to keep in mind the whole Suyin situation. So, but Nikki and. Jilan are going after Russell at the same time on the outside world. San Francisco's in the pan, like obviously some places got off better than others. I'm um, obviously uh, the Shin family restaurant is totaled, but it, it's an, it's it's I, not enough that it can't be repaired. But it's still like you, it's very heartbreaking. You can tell for like uh, mainly because this is the, her pride and joy. This is her family's legacy, and it's in tethers, you know. But luckily everyone's okay. 
Evan gets uh, Mia to Ryan in time. And I guess because of her, like, as a, a warrior, like, when she got the transfusion, it was enough to kind of bounce her back. Um, like, once she got blood pumping into her system again, like, as a warrior, it, it kicked, as a, as a hyper, it kicked in, like, I guess some, like, rapid healing. So, she's ready to kind of end, she has to go help Nikki, because she feels Russell closing into his goal. Because no one else can go through the portal, um... I was worried Henry would try. It's like, okay, he did try, but it didn't let him go. I was like, oh, it would suck if you tried and immediately died because of it. But luckily, uh, that didn't happen. So it's up to Mia. She's the only other person that could legitimately get through. I was wondering if they were, I was about to say, like, maybe her mom, because obviously that blood flows to her mom as well. But I'm like, you would still need a guardian, and there's no other guardians around. So it is on, on uh, Mia to handle this, so... But I love uh, Dennis adding it because it's like, right, Dennis, come, Dennis and Althea show up and it's like, oh, what's happening? It's like, well, um, this and this is happening. Um, Mia wants to go help Nikki, who's on the other side of that portal. Oh, and also Russell is Kerwin, so he's got muscles. It's like, okay, I didn't understand any of that. And then even Jim is like, I'm confused by that too. It's like, yeah, a lot's getting thrown at you. Um but Dennis comes through with the D&D lore. It's like, I love how D&D ends up being the resolution, ends up being the solving piece to the puzzle to so much. If it's not this, it's Stranger Things. Um, but Dennis said, like, oh, like, even an immortal can be killed by a very special or divine weapon, which Mia immediately remembers the dagger that was used to kill Su Yin. That It's like, right, he used to cut her, so maybe it can be used on him even as an immortal being, so... It's up to her to see this through. Um, Nikki and Jilan go toe to toe with him because it's like, right, we're not letting you go. Even if you are powerful now, we're not going to let you go. But luckily, Mia shows up, but the dagger still isn't enough to stop him. So the trio, which immediately when I saw, I was like, oh, this reminds me of the boys. Girls get it done. Like when they were like, when Maeve, Starlight, and Kimiko were like, beating Stormfront down, it reminded me of that, I'm like, yo, you might be like this borderline god right now, but they're like hand, handing your ass to you, I'm like, yeah, 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 but then he still got all the supernatural powers, I think they still stand a better chance because they are from their respective bloodline, so it does give them an extra boost, and it is two, it is a warrior, it is a guardian, and it is a hybrid, working toe and toe, that's also why I was kind of surprised about the Suian thing not coming in place and me and never meeting her too is interesting but i think because he himself isn't spe like you know that's the whole thing of like russell wanted to be special he's technically not so i think that's why the power's too much for him if maybe like a hybrid like mia or um su yin took care of it maybe it would you know or probably like someone from just it doesn't need to even have to be a hybrid probably someone from the warrior or guardian bloodlines would be able to handle it but he's not so it became too much for him to handle so it became a situation of one of them's gonna have to stay here to make sure that um to make sure that he stopped here and there that he doesn't leave this realm that he's here when it collapses and Nikki wants it to be her because she feels it's her responsibility she wants Mia to go live her life but Mia's like I killed someone I don't deserve that but she's like you do deserve forgiveness because she remembers what her Shifu told her you know it's like right starting with nothing that's a good place to start when she felt like she had nothing things between her and Evan were bad she's like I can make things up with me and my family and look where things are right now with all of that you know and it's like right I thought I had nothing and look what I, having that second chance like what I was able to make of that second chance so she wanted Mia to have that and she wanted Jilan to leave with her but Jilan decided to stay it's like this is my way to fully earn my forgiveness go home you know it's and those final words Go home, little monk. But also, it's her way to... She might not be able to kill Russell, but she's able to trap him here, and it's kind of the best thing. Plus, it's what she's always wanted. So, Nikki gave her forgiveness, and it's like, right, wanting to make sure that N Nikki has every... Because Nikki has always been the good person, it's like, right, you deserve to go home with me, with your family. Because for Jilan, she has nothing left in this world. Uh, it's not like Kerwin's around anymore. That's the only last tie potential she had in this world. So, for this to be the end, her staying there and getting buried with um, Russell and at the end luckily Mia and Nikki got out and it's just kind of the aftermath of everything um, 
the restaurant's messed up, but the entire families come together to see this through. And you're not just them, the entire community. The Shins have helped so much in the community. It's like, right, you've helped us, so we want to help out too. And I love that Maybelline's just kind of like, no, 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 no. I think it's, I think it's the, um, I think it's the Asian mom and her being like, no, 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 I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, but it's like, no, uh, the entire community wants to help you. And I, I just thought that was beautiful how that comes full circle as well. And uh, obviously Ryan's got all the questions about that world, but it's like, right, what happens to everyone else that's there? And Nikki's like, I don't know. But she's like, I hope they found peace, which would include Yulon, who was stuck there. So, um, obviously there's the Althea and Dennis situation. Um, Dennis is saying, like, right, eventually they're going to find out about the app circumstance, but... Althea doesn't care. like, And she's like, I'm not going to let some investigative or j journalist find out. I'm going to let people know. like, I'm not going to shy away from what I did because what I did was the right thing. I helped save lives doing that. So whatever the consequences may be, I'll face them. Even if it ruins what we're trying to build now with the company, I will rebrand and I will rebuild. I am a survivor. And Dennis agrees. So we'll see. It's probably going to be an uphill situation. Because we're also not done, I'm sure, with Dennis's family. Because let's not forget, they're still working with Chase uh, Mathis. So that storyline has not been resolved either. So I'm sure a lot of that's going to come to head. Along with everything Althea's going through, potentially in the future in that regard. Um, Henry's story played out what I thought it would, but just circumstances being slightly different. When he got visited by the lady from the Wong's Eye, I thought like, oh, she's here to recruit you. That's what I thought was going to be. I figured Henry and Nikki would go their separate ways, but I thought it would be because, oh, I, um, I thought the situation would be that he would become a part of the Wong's Eye and he's like, right, I need to fulfill my destiny. This is part of my, uh, carrying on the torture of his father type of situation, which, to some extent, that is there. But when he pulled out, like, his grandmother's ring, that's why I was like, oh, maybe he's going to change his mind. Because he was looking through his father's documents, and his father's final words to him was like, I'm sorry I didn't tell you the truth about who you are. Now, I thought that was something related to the Wanzai, but now I'm like, maybe he has a secret bloodline situation going on, too. Maybe the Wanzai isn't even aware of his circumstances, or maybe Henry himself is kind of like a special situation. Like, oh, a child born every 1,000 years. Um, just very much like Nikki's kind of like the chosen one in her own regard, which are, their paths are taking, their lives are taking them two separate paths currently, but I hope it doesn't turn them into a path where like they kind of end up having to butt heads. That's what I was worried about him joining the Wanzai would end up doing because the Wanzai weren't a hundred percent like they were just like, because they felt like Nikki being of the warrior bloodline, she had her own self interest that they figured like would kind of, you know, it's like. She would want to do things her way and would not. I guess the Wan, Wanzai's and those bloodlines, guardians and warriors, haven't always seen eye to eye. And obviously, they don't. The Wanzai were willing to kill Mia, but Nikki was right not to. But it's like, well, everything still got set in motion anyway. So I think that plays a role in everything. But for Henry, it's about fig finding his father had semi secrets and. Um, so un unresolved, unfinished business that he needs to resolve. It's like, as his son, it's up to me to fulfill this for him. Because I think doing this will also bring him a little closer to his father. They only found their way back to each other so recently. And just to lose his dad before they could fully, fully reunite. But having the time they had is still something. But there, there was always going to be the thing of, with all the time between them. I think Henry's still going to hold on to that ring. Because I think one day when he comes back, he will pop the question. But... For him, uh, Henry, it's like, this is something he has to handle on his own, kind of, I guess, almost like his family legacy, just like Nikki took on all of this as a warrior, as her, her legacy, um, but she feels like, he feels like he has to do this along, which, you know, Nikki for so long would try to do that, but eventually relied on everyone else around her, so they have to say their goodbyes for now. I don't think, I don't believe it will be for her. I think time will tell. Whatever it is that Henry's looking into, I think it will bring him back into the fold after he finds it. Maybe some truths about himself along the way. Um, I was so curious about the whole Mia situation, like where the, she was going to land. I thought Nikki was going to keep her around and, um, you know, but it's like, instead, she's at the monastery and I think it's beautiful because where Mia now is kind of like unsure of everything is where Nikki was three years ago before she found Paling and like sent her to the monastery. It's like the monastery did so such good for Nikki, allowed her, you know, to 
be where she the, those that training that experience that control led her to where she is now and hopes that control will also help uh me and she sees you see it feels like she's almost centered again i guess it almost she found another family another camaraderie so i doubt we're done with mia but i you know maybe she won't be and used in a full capacity, maybe it would just be like, hey, let's check in with Mia. Like, maybe you won't see her at all, but you'll know she's out there in the world, still training at the monastery, getting her power under control. Because they're currently the only ones, as well as the Wanzai, that know the truth about Mia. But to be fair, the bell is gone, so there's no recreating any of this. That's kind of the end result, which is kind of interesting. Once again, I'm so surprised this series, this season is ending the way it did. Because... I was expecting maybe Kerwin would be the last one standing. Ironically, he would have been because it would have been Russell in his body. But still, um, yeah. No tans left. All of that's gone. He might not be necessarily dead, but he's gone for now. Um, but that's a through line that could always circle back around. We'll get to that in a second. But I do like where Nikki ends up, obviously, at um, the classroom where Henry taught. And in that moment... Uh, she's training a little bit, and the little girl's like, "Hey, like, can you teach me?" And she does, and I think that's a beautiful way to pick, uh, you know, to use what she's done and pass it on to other people. Kind of uh, almost, you know, doing what you know she did it for Mia, and now do it for others. Like what her Shifu did for her, I think would be a beautiful thing. So I think you could see, I could easily see her taking over Henry's classes fully, and you know, doing that good work in his stead, in her master stead, in some regards. I think would uh, be uh, pretty dope. But um, everything else, obviously, with the Shin family, you know, everything's good. The restaurant's getting built back up. Obviously, I'm sure we're going to get more of a uh, Ryan and uh, Sebastian in the future. Um, but still unclear. Well, obviously, there's a the whole Nadia situation, you know, finally clear to air about that last episode. But now the question is, what happens going forward with Evan? You know, like, what is he going to do? Like, is he going to... Uh, take his old boss his old job. Is he going to walk away from his job um, and not take it back? Will he kind of go more, like I said, private investigator or something? Like, what's next for him in that, um, in this next chapter for him as well? And then finally, we have the stinger at the end. So I was like, okay, so who is it going to be? Is it going to be like Su Yin? Yeah, and lo and behold, it's, I can only guess is Zhao, which I'm like, so we still got where I thought we were. I was like, I was like, I knew the end result was going to end up with her because they've done too much to set her up just to kill her off. They went through too much trouble to set her up as kind of like this villainous person. So we see that she has a pendant around her neck. And I think that's supposed to be everything from the that world. So that's why I'm wondering, like, is like Jilan, uh, Russell, everyone from the Warrior and Bl uh, Guardian bloodlines. Maybe Russell's gone, but maybe Jilan is still alive in there somewhere. Because the question was, what happened to him? She was like, I hope they found peace. I think everything from that world and everyone is there. Somehow, Zhao was able to find her way out. Maybe she was playing worried the entire time, just waiting for her opportunity. Because maybe while the portal was open and Mia and Jilan, I mean, not, uh, while the others were distracted, she found her way out. Maybe before Mia or Henry or Evan were there, like maybe she slipped out in that time frame or maybe when the world collapsed, she always had one final backup, a contingency if anything like that happened. So she ended up absorbing it all into a pendant. So maybe she's walking around this world as a god. Everything that Russell wanted to be, she is. Maybe the difference is the power's not flowing directly into her. It's trapped in this pendant that maybe she could tap into it every the source every once in a while to unleash it, that power. So I figured they were setting her up to be like a potential like main main antagonist. So I think that's where the groundwork is kind of being set on that front. Uh, what that ends up being. Um, how that plays out. Once again, what that fully means for everyone, like a Jilan, is this the end? Is she dead? What about Russell? Like, is he still in there too? I figure because he's not a, of the war. I mean, he had Mia's blood, but I don't know how long that was going to sustain and with the power and everything. Like, he could be the full-blown battery for that. I don't know, but I'd assume everyone else from that. Like I said, uh, Jilan, um, maybe Su Yin as well. Like, maybe Zhao isn't the only one. The fact, once again, the fact is they introduced that element and they didn't really do much other than Nikki confronting her. Maybe that'll come full circle where Nikki will have to dive into that world again and she'll end up meeting with Suyin. Um, 
Because it's not like it's Su Yin out here. Not unless it is. Not unless that's her just looking like Zhao or something. But I'm assuming it's Zhao herself. So what she's going to do. It's almost interesting because it's almost like that first arc is done. I mean, even though like... It's almost like the... Um, the arc is almost the villain arc. So it's like, right, the first two seasons have all been the Russell Tan arc to some extent. It's like more so Jilan was obviously like the main, main antagonist. And then Russell was kind of like a secret main antagonist. But it's like, I mean, they're both individual arcs, but they're so connected. So, but I guess it still feels like this is part three to that same arc. Um, It's all like connected, but it's like obviously three separate arcs. But still, it's just, it's just, I it almost felt like one ending with uh, season one and two put together, like it feels like one chunk, and that maybe going forward, like this could be the next beginning of a not just a new arc in a regard of like, oh, this being the third arc, but like also like the second large arc of some sort. You know, I'd be so curious to see what that fully entails. Kung Fu is coming back for a third season. It was one of the shows that was um, announced with the uh, other CW renewals. Uh, I'm like I said, I'm so curious to see what the full arc is going to be uh, next season and uh, how this Jow thing, how it ultimately ends up playing out. Especially going to be interesting now that like the villain is Russell Tan. It's like once again that's been removed, but obviously you know any power vacuum is that void is going to be filled by somebody, uh, whether that's. Um, Zhao. Well, let's not forget, there's also, well, because there's going to be probably other people trying to fill that void, criminal-wise, but there's also the group he was trying to get close to to get the hammer. Like, there's still a thing, but whether anything happens with that or not, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, but I, I'm very, very excited to see what Season 3 will have in store for us with all of this. Another thing, this is just a me thing. This show is going next season. I'm probably going to label this as a Super Fantify. I could change everything to a Super Fantify, but it's like, it doesn't matter. The title cards are always, always going to read untitled reviews. Didn't know the show was going to have the supernatural element. It was going to very much like Nancy Drew. I thought maybe it'll stop with the weapons and then it continued and I never shifted over. So I'm like, eh, screw it. Does it matter? Is it that big of a deal? No, but as I've mentioned time and time again, I'm very alien over attentive about that type of stuff. And so it's always going to gnaw at the back of my head. Like, oh yeah, I labeled the entirety of the first two seasons as a, a super fantify as a untitled reviews instead of a super fantify which i should have very much like into the badlands i labeled that when i did the third season but regardless uh because i remember every other show like nancy drew how i started that off as a crime centric or how i mislabeled dark matter as a super fantify instead of the not too comic book that it was uh so and van helsing i did that with its first season as well once again i remember everything because i got that's i uh, that's always going to gnaw at the back of my head. It's been years. Still gnaws at the back of my head. Uh, back in my mind. Regardless, once again, that's a me thing. It's not that big of a deal, but I'm just curious. In case anyone's like, oh, if you're familiar and you're like, oh, why did you name these Super Fantifies? Because I was stupid and didn't. And I was like, I've kind of gone too far. And I didn't expect the supernatural element to be the big thing that it was. But even then, I still did it with Into the Badlands. That will always be my asterisk. Of, that should have been my key sign of doing that. I was always conflicted on what to do about that. Tangents and all that aside. Once again, doesn't matter. It's a me thing, but I just figured I should also include that in the end here. Regardless, uh, till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.